is a presentation of Main Street Media, your source for news, sports, and information on Main Street in Middle Tennessee. Just three days left in this year, and we head into 2022. And let's hope 2022 is a fantastic year for everybody. Anyway, so welcome in. We'll get you off and started today on this great show. We got a lot of good stuff for you coming your way. We got events happening tonight. We got book authors on. We got restaurants that are making people happy. And we got Miss Cheap will join us as well at 7:30 today, as she does every Tuesday. We love having Miss Cheap a part of the show each and every week. So it's gonna be fun. Uh, let's bring in my good friend, the intern, from Parts Unknown once again. But you got a guitar. Did you draw that guitar behind you? That's pretty nice. Yes, I did. I used uh, I used mulch. Okay. To, to draw it, yeah. Okay. All right, I'm just looking at myself here. I mean, <laughs> handsome again as usual, just making sure there. Uh, did you have a good uh, – did you watch football last night? No, I did not, actually. I didn't catch the game. I did hear about it this morning, though. Uh, I heard the rookie got had a pretty good showing, Ian Book. Oh, he did. Yes, <laughs> had a really good show. Yes, uh, he was awful last night. Yeah. That's what By I the mean. way, uh, I, I I do a little betting from I'm on the Bet MGM app, right. and every game I do this, and I'll tell you for those listening out there, I always take every game I find one game. I do it with the Titans mostly, but where I put money down for the first touchdown to be scored, which I love this betting part for the defensive player because the odds are usually plus four thousand. Okay, you get that? All right. So last night I had the Saints do it because the Saints are at home, crowd. Uh, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to put the Dolphins. And then like an idiot, I go back to the Saints. Dolphins, first touchdown of the game, pick six. No way. Would have been worth had I bet, stayed there, $1,200. Uh, that's all right. It happens. That's what they call it. Gambling. Exactly. There you go. And yeah. also, you know, that, that, that'll keep you coming back because the next time you try it, it'll, it'll work. It'll work next time. Then I took the over at 30 at 40 over was 37, took the over. That didn't happen because the Saints were awful. And then I did a parlay with touchdowns from Alvin Kamara and Mark Ingram. That didn't happen. So mm. so uh my son will not be going to school this semester because <laughs> dad gambled. No, I would never do that. My my gambling is really small. You play you play big time, right? Yeah, I go I go for the high roller thing. You go with the ponies, man. Big you won recently though, right? Yeah, I, uh, me and my dad went to the game, the Titans game last week, and we did a little parlay before we left, uh, and it hit. Yeah, it hit. It was Deontay Foreman touchdown, uh, 199 over for the passing yards of Tannehill, and Titans to win. Straight up? Straight up. What would you get? Tell me off, like, how, Four, how much you win? 340. Really? Yeah. Are you serious? I swear to and I'm the one to. giving you money to for parking and lunch. <laughs> This is ridiculous. Yes, please don't stop. You know, don't stop. Well, I'm gonna have to get the uh, uh, talk to somebody about this. <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll put that full. There you go. Thanks, pal. Full screen. There. Here's your latest headlines from Main Street Nashville on this December 28, 2021. Great picture on the cover of the E edition. Uh, a muralist at work. Charles Key aims to inspire community one wall at a time. Look at this drawing on the wall. Can you? Can you? I mean, I couldn't even. Uh, in my wildest dreams, think about doing something like this. this is some, I could draw stick figures, but the detail and all that, look at that. That's amazing. Amazing. Charles, you're talented. Another great shot by Larry McCormick there on the front page of the E-Edition of Main Street Nashville. Let's scroll through there today, and I just come across this article here. Uh, full disclosure, my son does go to DCA. We live about a mile and a half from the school, and, of course, we all remember the tornado that 
uh, came through in March of 2020. So the school, they're almost back. There's still there's some stuff that's got to be done. January 4th, Lori Aber with a nice article about DCA. January 4th is when everybody should be back on campus. The elementary schools have been at other places around Donaldson Hermitage doing school while they repaired everything. I mean, it, if you remember that day, all the field, the football field was gone. Uh, the, the portables were lifted up and dumped. They're found, you know, miles away, just everything. I mean, it was absolutely awful. But hopefully in a week from now, when they go back to school, a week from today, everybody's reunited on one campus, and that is really cool. So that's a nice story there from Lori today to go. Uh, you know, always talk about stuff that make it happen. Really cool story here. Springfield Native develop, uh, develops game for Steam and Xbox. Guy's 18 years old, Dallin Larson, freshman at Austin P. He's also created a game. For Xbox, and it's a very cool thing that he's doing here, and a nice story. He just put his dreams together and did it. He said, I want to be a game developer since I was really young. Grew up on video games. It's always been a skate for me and for a lot of us, but he took it to the next level. So good job for you, Dallin Larson, for getting it done and making it happen that way. Uh, one of the good things we love about the paper every morning is the history, right? History of Nashville, the Nashville Banner, 60 years ago today. Here's a front page story of a uh, kind of a wind driven snow across stalled cars on James Robertson Parkway as a city salt truck goes into action. And there's a city salt truck there. Here's what I laughed about this morning because it's going to be 70, what, three today? Here's the temperature. Let me go down here and find it. On this day, 60 years ago, the high temperature is going to be 28 degrees. For those of us who lived here all of our lives in December, it would be freezing. There would be very little snow. It'd be freezing. So when you walk outside and see it's 70 degrees, you're like, what in the world is going on here? And the picture to the left is this guy, Ron Harold Smith, chief meteorologist at the U.S. Weather Bureau, scans a radar scope for precipitation. Just amazing how far technology has come. This instrument is capable of detecting cloud formations and precipitation patterns up to 200 miles from its Nashville Municipal Airport site, which we now call BNA. So very cool. And I love history and all that goes along with it and things that have happened. Look, sports buffs on this day, 19, I think it's 75 right there. You can click on the link to the video. The Hail Mary. You know, we talk about Hail Mary in sports. It's good. Where did it come from? Right here, Dallas and Minnesota. Roger Stallback to Drew Pearson. He scores. You can click on the little video tab there and boom, play it for you. The things that happen that go on. That's really, really cool. Uh, with all that you get on the E edition of the Main Street, Nashville. Came out yesterday, CDC recommends shorter COVID isolation from 10 days to five and shorten the time that close contacts need to quarantine. So there, that came out yesterday afternoon. It was the big news on all the stations late last night. All right, so as we do every morning, look, Titans will play Miami one last night. The Dolphins, Titans play Miami at home. Last regular season home game will be this Sunday Dolphins come in. They are red hot. They've won seven in a row. They're eight and seven. They just really took it to New Orleans last night. It was not a very good game if you're a Saints fan. Not good at all. All right, so as we do every morning, let's go to our comic strip tease. Oh, by the way, intern, what's your Zodiac sign again? It's a Taurus. Lay it on me. Okay, let me find out. Okay, there, Taurus. May 19th, right? Correct. Thanks. All man. right, here's the intern Zodiac for today. A change will spark your imagination and push you in a new and exciting direction. Not bad, huh? Oh. Express your desire to make a difference, and someone influential, me, will support your thoughts and actions. Progress is within reach if you go through the proper channels. So please ask me before you do anything. Got it. That's what I read. Is that what you got out of that? Absolutely. All right. So it's time for our comic strip tease this morning, brought to you by the comic pages of Main Street Nashville. All right. Our comic today is the wonderful, funny, an awful cartoon called Zits, which I read that I'm immediately back as a sophomore at McGavick because Zits. All right. So playing the role of the mom is the intern. Playing the role of the young, crazy, goofy son is myself, who I'll be reading this part has Hannibal Lecter. Uh, intern, do you have a voice yet? Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to find it along the way. All right. All right, here we go. Zits, welcome. <clears throat> and three, two, and scene. Hello, Mom. Did you tape this newspaper article on my mirror? <laughs> yes. Do you, did you like it? Why don't you just text me a link? I can never remember how to do that. Tsk. 
How did your generation ever discover fire? Cave people were not my generation. <laughs> oh, oh man, so terrible! Hey, that was great. That was Look, great. When he wrote this, did he think this was funny? <laughs> I, I mean, didn't know Hannibal would be reading it. <laughs> uh, hello, mom. Did you take this newspaper article on my mirror? No wonder Hannibal went crazy. Uh, all right. Anyway, good job, intern. We'll get out just in time for the boss turns on the show. Woo, that was close. All right. Take a break now. We'll come back to the other side. Donna Driver is going to join us. She is everything that I want to be. She's an author. She's a singer. She acts in community theater. There's so many wonderful things. And I've told you guys, I'm obsessed with people who write books. Obsessed. Because... We talk about it, but people like Donna actually do it. And it's really cool. She joins us next. You're watching Mornings on Main Street. Welcome to Main Street Nashville. Our newly launched e-edition allows you to read our paper online from anywhere in the world. You are in control of how and when you read or listen. Subscribers can access our e-edition online at MainStreet-Nashville.com or on a smartphone or tablet using our Main Street Nashville app. In a browser, today's and all previous issues are available at the click of a button. Main Street Nashville is fully responsive. Click and drag your cursor to move the paper left and right. To see photos and text at a larger scale, double-click on a page. Clicking print will allow you to print an article or crossword at your convenience. View photo galleries and videos by clicking the icon on an image. Click play on videos once the screen appears. Main Street Nashville's E-Edition is a simple, new way to interact with and consume news. Access the full E-Edition of Main Street Nashville on your computer, tablet, or smartphone. Read whatever you want, whenever you want. If you have any questions, we're here to help. Call us at 615-527-4104 or email us at news at MainStreetNash.com. Hey guys, good job. Welcome back to Morningville Main Street. Nice fellow bringing us in right there. I love it. Hey, intern, let them know if they do that again. Uh, mellow music, they're out the door. All right, welcome back to the show. Let's bring in our next guest this morning, Donna Driver, author, everything. Donna, here's how I, I, I've known you for a while, but yesterday I'm scrolling through Twitter and I see you put out a tweet. I go to your website and I start reading all the stuff that you've done. And again, I'm just mesmerized by the things you've done, the writing and everything. You are a this lady. Yes. <laughs> I can always have something going on. <laughs> you are. Busy. All right. So let's talk. What, what's your latest project you got going on now? Well, I'm actually just finished a project. So um, uh, aside from doing um, writing, I also do theater. And um, I just finished doing three shows in a row. Um, and uh, uh, the last thing I did was assist and direct and choreograph Miracle on Bedford Falls at the Larry Keaton Theater, which closed right before Christmas. So, um, but my most recent um, book that came out, out was in November and it is a sequel to my book, Songwriter Night. And the new one is called uh, Songwriter Showcase. <laughs> so. that is, tell me how you came up with the idea for this book well um so the the idea for it actually started in 2020 because um theater got shut down and everybody i knew was sort of out of work and not doing anything fun so we um i got this idea to write a musical play in book form and then to record it with a full cast of actors and songs 
And so I asked my friend, composer Caleb Dinger, to help me with the songs. And we, uh, we wrote it. And one at a time, we brought the actors in all throughout 2020 and uh, recorded it. And then Caleb painstakingly edited it together so that we have songwriter night. It's about three hours long to listen to. Um, it's available wherever you get your audiobooks. And it's a lot of fun. Like if you like musicals, if you like country music, um, it takes place here in Nashville. And it's just, it's a sweet little romantic comedy. And so then this year when we got it published, uh, I went ahead and I did like an actual book version. So it's an ebook and, and print. And then I wrote a sequel so that you can find out what happens next to the characters. And that is out now too, but not as an audio book. I love the fact that probably the, the title of a book, Songwriter Night, has probably been mentioned a billion times in Nashville. Nobody's taking the next step. You did it. You wrote it and everything. You had to be just really satisfied with, with getting this to come together. Because, again, I told you, I'm just mesmerized by people who talk about writing a book, but then go out and write a book and put it together. Because it's not an easy task, Donna. No, it's a lot of time alone in your office by yourself. Um just thinking and staring at your computer and um so yeah when it finally all comes together it's it's very exciting and this is a little more exciting than most projects because as the audiobook i got to hear it um being performed by some of my favorite people uh that perform in theater here in town and um hear them sing the songs that caleb and i wrote and it was a lot of fun um and we're hoping to actually put it on stage at some point in the next year or so. So that's well done. And I gotta commend you on your website. It's dgdriver.com. Yeah. Uh, all too often, uh, you know, we'll talk to people and their websites are, are terrible and oh, I gotta get that taken care of. But your website, Donna, is perfect. I mean, it is perfect with everything you're doing and getting done. And right, you know, you could go right down. There you are, and there you could learn about your book there. So having a website, as you know, and you see it right there is critical to the success of a writer yes it's it's nice it's a nice little place to put all of your work um thank you so much i work hard on it <laughs> um so uh i i really appreciate that but yeah there's a page for each um book or series so if you want to learn about anything it'll tell you all about it where you can get it some reviews um and some other places where i've like done blog posts and stuff like that um, What's it like that right there? Your, your idea, your creation, and everything right there on the screen. Um, it's exciting. Uh, it, it's it's neat. One of the, the the most fun things as an author, especially like when a lot of books come out in ebook, like they don't feel like anything. And um, so whenever you get to see all your stuff in one place, like on a website, or you get to actually like, you know, hold a book in your hand that you wrote. It, it feels very concrete, like you've done something. Because um, a lot of times, like I said, it's, it's a very lonely job to write and, um, you know, and, and to do the marketing. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's nice to see how it all looks all together. Uh, so what's next for you? Now you just said you did the play at Larry Keaton Theater. You're writing books. What's next for you? Um, well, I'm about to take a little break from theater because I just did three shows back to back, which took a lot of time. And um, so I'm going to take a break for a couple of months anyway. And I think um, my, my next plan actually is to take Songwriter Night and adapt it into a stage show. Because um, right now it very much has it's heavy on narration because it's a book. Um, right. So we're going to take that narration out and um, probably add a few more songs um, and then try to find a place to, to do it. So that's sort of next. And then I had started a new novel last year. Um, so I'll probably get back to work on that. <laughs> I know you're busy. I know uh, what you all done, the work you've done the past couple of years. You know, we did a TV thing together a while ago. Uh, so I just think it's great what you're doing. I'm, again, enamored with your process of putting it all together because we all talk about bugs, but nobody ever really takes that next step. And you did, you made it happen. And there, so let's go to the website, dgdriver.com. Your books are on there. And you also have a section real quick on 
you didn't write these, but am I, did I read this correctly on books you recommend to read for winter? Is that right? Uh, yes, I will. I'm about to post my newest blog post um, this week. Um, at the end of every year, I sort of do a post that sums up on my blog that sums up the books that I've read for the year. So I, I have that, the, the things that I liked the most. But also of the books that I've written, um, I do have a handful that take place in the winter. So um, I like to point that out around this time of year. I do have my, well, my young adult books, basically. So I have this series, which is a YA fantasy series. It starts with Cry of the Sea, and they all take place from October through February. So they're, they're good wintertime books. And also my um, young adult romance novel, All the Love You Write, which is also a ghost story. It starts in January for the um the second semester of their senior year in high school. So those are my my winter books. <laughs> that is so, that's so excellent. Donna, thank you so much. And then your next project will bring you back on. Keep promoting you for all the good that you're doing. Thank you so much. And, and I think you're fantastic. Have a great thank Tuesday. Thank you. Donna. Thanks for having me. All right, you bet. Donna Driver again, author, playwright, everything. Uh, so creative. Uh, again, so fantastic. DGDriver.com is the website. All right, we'll take a break. Come back to the other side. A very cool event happening tonight at a great place that you need to know about in God's country, in Donaldson, that's happening. And once you find out about this place, you'll never be the same. All right, you're watching Mornings on Main Street. Coach Hunt, uh, Jim Toman at Middle Tennessee State. Just wanted to give you a shout out and congratulate you on an unbelievable career. Love for you to come this fall or in the spring to Middle Tennessee State and talk baseball or maybe even chat to my team, maybe catch a game or two. Just an unbelievable run that you've had. There's very few college baseball coaches that have done what you've done, Coach. And I uh, want you to enjoy the retirement. I know you're still working in the athletic department, but uh, take it easy, have fun, stay safe, and uh, just proud of you and all your accomplishments. I'm Tim Leeper, I'm Tim Leeper Roofing, and we do residential and commercial service and replacement. We're basically your friends in the roofing business. We're local, we can help you, we're quick to respond. Without customers, we don't have a business, so if there's anything we can do to help you, please don't hesitate to call. You've been putting back a few, and a few becomes a few too many. For a moment, you think about calling for a ride. Nah, you live nearby. What's the worst that can happen? You get pulled over, your insurance goes up, you lose your license, you total your car, you kill someone. All right, welcome back to Morning Zone. Let me see what the band's got going on. No, nope. <laughs> nope. all right, man, we're done with y'all for today. All right, welcome back to Morning Zone Main Street. Thank you, Donna Driver, for joining us. Let's head over now to Donaldson, where I told you guys Donaldson's the best place in America. Let's bring in Amy Billings. They own, own Wine Down Nashville. It's in Donaldson. It's a fantastic place. Uh, Amy, how are you? Good to see you. <laughs> Hi, Amy. Hey, Joe. I'm trying to get the uh, mic. That's good. You know, I see. I hear. We hear you. Then we lost you. Uh, there. You're back. Hi, Amy. Is there an earthquake in Donaldson? Perfect. Hi. Hi. I've got no audio. <laughs> Can you hear us now? Intern, what should we do? Hold on there, Amy. We got the intern working on it. 
Can you unmute your computer? Here, you know what we'll do? We'll work on it. We'll do this real quick. Da -da. Welcome to live streaming television. First of all, I'll tell you about Yay, Wine Down Nashville, located in Donaldson. Nashville's boutique wine and spirits bar. Hey, Amy. If you hear me, you just let me know. Yeah, Tonight at Wine Down Nashville, I, we have a, uh, they're helping out the Donaldson Gateway Project. It's a nonprofit organization. Post 2021 goodbye at Wine Down Nashville this Tuesday at support the Donaldson Gateway Project at the same time from 5 to 9 p.m. Wine Down, intern, you doing right over there, buddy? Wine Down Nashville will donate 20% of sales to our mission. Stop by, grab a glass of wine. Thank these kind folks for being such hip neighbors. Right at Wine Down Nashville, located in Donaldson. Uh, Winnie, closer intern. So you think her mute button is on on the computer? She said that her volume's all the way up. So volume's all the way up. This is real time troubleshooting, folks. You're not going to get this anywhere else. Not on Today Show. Not on Good Morning America. Not on whatever show CBS has on. Only on mornings on Main Street with the intern feverishly working hard over there. So, yeah, Wine Down Natural tonight, big event. Again, it's the city of Donaldson next to where the new library is going to be going in. And the event, what the Donaldson, boom, Donaldson Gateway Project. A nonprofit committed to clean, green, and vibrant Donaldson. Upcoming events, look, boom, Wine Down Nashville tonight. Give back night at Wine Down Nashville. Hey, intern, how you doing, buddy? <laughs> good, man. How are you? Good. It's good to see you again. Uh, enjoy the evening of uh, Wine Down Nashville and support the Donaldson Gateway Project's work with each sip. Nice. Tuesday, December 28th, Wine Down tonight. We'll donate 20% of all sales to our work. We'll have a grab-and-go cheese kits, ooh, craft cocktails, and wine <laughs> waiting for you. All right. How's that sound there? Intern, do you like that? You want to go tonight, buddy? Yeah, let's do it, man. Give back. All right. Should we? Let's take a break. Uh, you want to do this? I can actually hear you. <laughs> hey, Amy, what are you doing? Yay! <laughs> there you are. All right, I'm going to pull you up here. There you are, Amy. I guess that's the hard Amy. part of doing it like this, huh? I see two of you. There's two of me. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, tell me about tonight's event from five to nine. I just read it, but tell me about tonight's event. Well, tonight we're going to be uh, giving 20% of our sales, uh, our net sales to um, the Donaldson Gateway Project. And we're really excited to be a part of that. Uh, we love our community here in Donaldson and they've been very supportive. We've been here for a little over two years. And of course, I like to refer to it as nine months plus COVID. Uh, and if it weren't for our amazing uh, community, we wouldn't still be here. So we want to make sure that we give back. And this is a great and easy way to do it. It's also easy for the community because who doesn't want to come have wine? And uh, just by coming in and drinking wine tonight, you're going to be giving back. And I saw cheese kits or something like that that the uh, Gateway people put out there. So it's just more than drinking wine. There's a lot that goes on. And your place, Amy, I got to tell you, a lot of people talking about your place. It's a hidden gem. And once that library comes in right next to the new library where you guys are, uh, the sky is the limit for what you guys have done. I'm extremely jealous of you guys because I think it's a great idea and you're in a great location. Thank you. Yeah, we are. I guess uh, we want to not be so hidden as a gym, but <laughs> we have we do have fun events in here. We are kind of the accidental restaurant people, but uh, I've grew up here in Hendersonville around the music business. And when I was growing up, you know, we had a bunch of neighbors and celebrities, music people, producers, uh, you know, touring musicians and everybody would hang out together. It was no big deal. I wanted to bring that kind of idea here in Nash uh, to Donaldson because this is also a place that is just loaded with great neighbors and music people alike. And we wanted to provide a spot for everybody to be able to come together here just like the old days. I love it. The, the, the website's winddownnashville.com. Everything's involved in there. And yeah, I mean, there's some time, there'll be some big time celebrities, musicians will pop in and say hi to you guys. And that's part of the whole music thing that goes over there. I think it's really cool when I see you guys' website you. or pictures. 
that some big star had popped in over there right in Donaldson. It's just so cool because I live like two miles from you guys. Yeah, that's true. And, you know, we, my husband, uh, a lot of people think, oh, little pockets of East Nashville or, or Franklin, you know, that musicians, but we're loaded with musicians here in Donaldson. And we don't want, to, we want to be sure that we showcase the talent that's here, showcase what Donaldson has to offer, which is so much more. And, and I think it's starting to get the word out. It not, we're not just a hidden gem. I think Donaldson altogether is a hidden gem. And I think the word is starting to get out. I totally agree with you. Uh, again, you guys are located, for those that don't know, you're right to where the old Castronaut used to be in Donaldson, in the strip mall off to the side over there. And I, I think you got a, just a, a fantastic spot that's right there, right on old, is it old Lebanon Dirt Road? Old Lebanon, old Lebanon yeah. Road. Yeah, Old Lebanon Road that goes right there. So it's really cool. When did you guys open the doors again? Well, we opened in July of 2019. And we had nine month run. We had already started to gain momentum. Uh, some of the things that we started here, I started a series called Off Road Ramblings, where we bring our musician friends in that have toured with everybody in the world, from Prince to Toby Keith to Steve Miller Band. Um, of course, my husband will kill me when I say it out loud on TV, but uh, he plays for the Monkees. They've just wrapped up their farewell tour. Of course, we've lost Mike Nesmith now. So uh, he's still playing for Mickey Dolenz, who's carrying the torch, and he's going to be doing a great job. But um, basically, we just let them come in and tell their road stories and meet everybody and you know, everybody has wine. If you're not a wine drinker, we also do have non-alcoholic uh, cocktails as well. I do want to mention that because we are not, we are under 20. Well, you don't have to be 21 to come in and sure. eat. So uh, it's family friendly because we do not have smoking in here. It's very clean and we have wonderful clientele. So uh, all of our, all of our uh, customers end up becoming our friends. So it's a great environment for everyone. I love it. And tonight, again, from 5 to 9, benefiting the Donaldson Gateway Project. 20% of the sales goes to that great organization who helps keep Donaldson clean and vibrant. That's great. All right, so I'll see you tonight. We'll swing by tonight, say hi, uh, and help out the cause tonight. And, Amy, thank you. I know it's early. We'll continue promoting you guys and getting thank a good you. word about all the things you guys are doing. Thank you again. Thank you. All, all right, right. we'll see you tonight. Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you, Amy, from Wine Down Nashville, the website, windownnashville.com. You never know who you're going to see when you go in there. It's so cool. All right, we'll come back. Miss Chief is next. You're watching Mornings on Main Street. You knew the risks when you decided to drive drunk. There could be a crash. People could get hurt or killed. You could get arrested. But one thing's for sure, you were wrong when you said it was no big deal. In a complex world, our greatest strength is our people. Always has been, always will be. Regular Army. National Guard and Army Reserve. Executing every mission. Preparing for everything. And that's why people matter. Every soldier, every Army civilian, every Army family, every soldier for life. Every one of us. People who make up the best equipped, best trained, best led force in the world. People who serve something greater than themselves. Ready now. Investing in the future across every domain. Because in today's complex world, when the stakes are high, America calls its army. And when that call comes, second place is not an option. We'll remain ready. We'll modernize will compete, will fight, and we will win, because winning matters.
better. After a stern talk to the mornings on Main Street, they had to get their act together. All right, thank you guys back out. All right, as we do every Tuesday at this time, let's bring in our good friend, Miss Cheap. The mornings on Main Street. There she is. Good Tuesday morning, Miss Cheap. How are you? Doing great. I hope you had a great Christmas. I had a wonderful Christmas. Yourself? Absolutely. Wonderful. But it's weird because, you know, we were reading the headline for the National Banner from 60 years ago. The high temperature of this day, 1961, was 28 degrees. So <laughs> now it's going to be 70 today. It's weird. I like it. I'm telling you, this is good for me. <laughs> you know what? Me too as well. All right. Every Tuesday, you put a new article in, in the paper. This week, you have a really good article on, you know, Nashville's filled with some amazing people that really give back so much of their time. You got one on, let me say his name correctly, Bill Yeeman. Is that correct? That's right. And it's, it's, <clears throat> he really wants the credit to go to his foundation rather than to himself. Um, he's just a, he's a, he's a retired businessman. And when he saw the need, it started with the tornado and he went from there, but he, he has just the last two years just shown up with huge checks for second harvest food bank for the penny drive for uh, room in the Inn, and for Catholic charities of Nashville. And I mean, he is, he is making a difference and, you know, what he told me was that he said he when he finally when he decided to go ahead and, and take money out of the foundation instead of leaving it there until after his death, that he, he said he wanted it to change people and to change people's circumstances. But that in addition to that, it had really changed him. And I think that's really true. Three hundred thousand dollars to the Miss Cheap Penny Drive. Right. And it gets matched. So we're talking about six hundred thousand dollars. That's, you know, twenty four hundred meals. I mean, I, I mean, that's just amazing to me. And two hundred thousand dollars to room in the inn. I just, you know, just, what more can you say? than God bless you. I mean, it's amazing. Well, he is just he's a very unassuming person and um, he really wants to do good. And he had um, owned and operated a business that was uh, it's called Acton um, Mobile Services. And it was a um, it, it sold uh, construction trailers, you know, like that would go on a construction site yeah. for a, for a, for an office there. And he sold his company probably 20 years ago and set up this foundation in, in memory of his father. Uh, his fa father was Sumter Yeaman and he was an L&N uh, train engineer. And he said his father was just a working man and, you know, never had much and that money was always tight and that that he wanted to honor his parents because they were such good parents and had taught him such a good work ethic. And so everything, every every bit of the money is to be attributed to the Sumter uh, Yemen Charitable Foundation, which I think is even sweeter that, you know, Bill doesn't want any credit for it. It's just it's it's just he's very selfless about it. How do you get a guy like that who does not want any credit to sit still and talk to you? Um, to tell you the truth, he, he was very hard to interview because he really did not want any credit. I mean, he, he really didn't. I mean, you know, he, he, the best quote that I got from him, I think, was that he said, I, I can't he said, I can't fix the world, but I can do something. And what he wanted to say was he wanted to encourage other people, uh, no matter what their means are, uh, to do something because everybody can do something. And, you right. know, with the penny drive. Second Harvest says that one in seven um, people, one in eight children, uh, or one in eight, eight, eight people, one in seven children are at risk of hunger. And um, when I first started hearing statistics like that, I mentioned it to the priest at our church. And he said, well, that means that, you know, if they're, if they're one in eight uh, are at risk of hunger, that means there's seven of us that can do something about it. And I thought that was such a good way to look at it. And I think Bill looks at it that way, too, that it's a that you can't you can't fix everything, but you can help. And he he gave a lot of money to the tornado uh, when the tornado hit last year, um, and that was what really got him thinking about the need is now, not not after his death. I, I'm going to steal that from you because that's a great line. If one in eight are hungry, that means seven of us can help and do something. That that is a powerful powerful line that you just gave us right there to to take. And put it in our heart. You know, there are a lot of great nonprofits around here. And the thing that I've talked with people in the past as well, if you help one, you got to help them all, which is a great excuse for not helping any of them. But as right. you write in your story, let's do one at a time. Let's knock out something over here. There's something over here. Can't change the world, but you can change it one day at a time. And that's kind of what I got from the article from reading this. Well, and, you know, one of the reasons that I've supported Second Harvest is because it works with so many other agencies. And I think Bill was really... Um, he was adamant that the money that he gave to these agencies be 
for direct services, not for administration. And I think that's something he saw that that the the room in the end and Catholic Charities and Second Harvest all work through partnerships with other agencies. So they're not duplicating services. And so they're really pu pushing. To, they've been creative with the money that is given to them and making sure that, it, you know, with the pandemic, they've had to do a lot of things differently than they were able to do before. So I think, you know, I think he really was. I know that at Catholic Charities that they they had many conversations about the money that he gave them because he wanted it to go to direct services, not to, uh, you know, not to how people distributed it. So I think that was important to him, too. And it is to me, too. What do you think the common denominator is for you interviewed a lot of people, Miss Cheap, over the years who give back to the community and not just 10, 20 bucks, which is all great, but hundreds of thousands of dollars. Is there one thing that unites them? And these people probably don't know each other. Is there a common denominator with all of them? Is it just a simple fact that they just want to help others? I, I think uh, maybe the common denominator is when when they actually see the need and and feel and you know and feel the empathy for the people who are suffering. I mean there's no way that you could look at the video footage of Mayfield, Kentucky and not be moved by that to do something. I mean, I, you know, I don't know what you can do. I was just, it's almost overwhelming, but I think with, with Bill and with other people that if they see that, if they see that they can, they can link to organizations that will keep them posted of what's going on with their money about how it's being used um, and what difference it might actually be making so that it's not just a drop in the bucket. You know, I mean, I think, I think uh, most of these agencies realize that they need to keep their donors uh, uh, up to date on what is happening with their money and what the organization is doing to creatively, you know, provide services to people in need. And I, you know, I think when you feel like your money is going to do something good, it's a lot easier to give it away. That's, a that's very all I can good, think of though. That's I don't, a very good point. And you do that. That's why with second harvest, you know, exactly that it's going to feed families. You see the need, you see the people, uh, and unfortunately, you know, that's a problem in, in America that people, you know, go hungry and thank God for second harvest in our area who does a fantastic job of feeding so many people. Right. And, you know, uh, uh, one of the really frustrating things about second harvest or that second harvest faces is that it's not really that there's not enough food. So much of the challenge is access, that particularly in the rural areas. That a lot of these people don't have transportation or there's there's not a central place for them to pick up the food. And with the pandemic, they've been able they've not been able to use volunteers in the ways that they'd used them before. So, I mean, I think the access uh, part of the puzzle is something that they've really had to get creative with and been doing drive throughs and doing some some deliveries with Uber. And, you know, I mean, just just I think they're they're so passionate about what they do that it makes you want to give to them and makes you want to support them. Fantastic. Miss Cheap, thank you. Another great article each and every week. Uh, I, I'm so glad you're on our show because these articles are fantastic. You tell us things that we need to know and that if without you, we had no idea they were going on. So thank you again. Can I tell you about one more thing? Absolutely. So so the YMCA right now through through Friday has a, um, a they've waived the joining fee and the joining fee could be as much as one hundred and twenty five dollars. So if you if you're thinking about trying to get fit and going to the Y, you know there are 14 uh, Middle Tennessee Ys, and you can go to any one of those and sign up without having to pay that membership fee. So you, then you still have to pay a monthly fee once you get right. started. But you know that's a pretty good savings right there. It is the Y does great work. I live across from the Y in Donaldson. They've been there 50 years. They do such great work. All right, thank you for that, Miss Chief. I appreciate you. Have a great week. We'll see you next Thanks. week. You too. Stay cheap. There we go. Miss Cheap has a new column every Tuesday in Main Street, the E-edition of Main Street Nashville. Let's go to MainStreetMediaTN.com. It's all right there for you. Sign up, uh, and the latest news live right to your inbox. It's really cool. And you got the app as well. So, again, thank you, Miss Cheap. All right, we'll take a break. Come back. Uh, we're headed down to Spring Hill. We've had them on the show before. The great folks uh, at a really cool restaurant, and they're doing great work again. And something happened last week which made the news big time. Uh, in a good way. We're going to tell you what that is when we come back. You're watching Mornings on Main Street.
makes as much sense as driving drunk. Welcome back to Mornings on Main Street. There we go. Thanks, guys. All right, again, thank you, Miss T, for joining the show as you do every Tuesday. Now let's head down to Spring Hill. Let's bring in Frank. He owns Grecian Family Restaurant. Uh, one of the finest men you will ever come across and the work he's doing in the community. Frank, good morning to you, buddy. Good morning. Thank you for having me again. All right. Every time I turn around, you guys are making some sort of news down there. Uh, last week, let's talk what happened last week. A uh, couple of people come in and tip your servers over a thousand dollars. Tell me when you first heard and saw this, the restaurant, your thoughts. Well, to be honest with you, I didn't know anything about it. It was a complete shock to me. Uh, David Dutton, who was in charge of all this, had told me he was going to bring a group in of people, you know, keep everything the same, didn't change anything, you know, keep everything as your normal routine, which I did. So I didn't know anything. So he had called me the previous night and said, we'll be about 15 to 20 people. And I said, that's fine. And he goes, you know, keep everything, you know, your staff, everything the same way, you know, didn't tell me anything. I didn't know what was going on, you know, so they came in uh, Tuesday, you know, around 1130, they sat down and at the end, I was shocked, and so were my staff. He, they just handed him twenty two hundred dollars as a gratuity. I, they were overwhelmed. You know, it was it was it was such a nice act of kindness. I I I, I couldn't believe it myself. Uh, you, you know, and the you know, the backbone of any good restaurant are is your staff. You know, and to see them light up like that. You know, Christmas is not great for a lot of people. But this made your staff smile. It made me smile. I wasn't even there. Yeah, me too. I, I, I didn't know how to react. I'm like, oh, my God. I mean, I, I couldn't believe it. I was shocked myself. The other ones were, you know, the one waitress was almost in tears. The other one was just like staring into space. Couldn't believe that they were handed that, you know, that kind of a tip. Oh, that is so great. We're yeah. going to pull your website up here now. How long have you been down in Spring Hill? I have the store almost uh, almost eight years. It's been there a few years before, so it's close to almost nine, ten years there. And had this ever happened before? Anything close to this? No, I've never seen anything like it. They walk in and tip over eleven hundred dollars per your two servers. Per server. That is just amazing, uh, and, and what such a special time too, right? I mean, Christmas it time, things are going you know, on. David's, David's been a regular customer in, of my store for many years, and a lot of his networking group also are customers of mine. So I just thought, like you said, he didn't tell me a word. He didn't say anything to me. He kept it just like a normal day, everything the way it should be, and. You know, they came in with their group, and like I said, I know a lot of them. They've been regular customers of mine. You know, the server served them, and at the end, they handed them the $2,200. That is amazing. You know, we had you on. I found out about you guys before Thanksgiving when you are giving away so many meals to people in the community. How did that day go? That was unbelievable. I was, I was extremely happy. We had uh, served over 1,600 meals that day. Whoa. So that, that was, was really, really good. 1600 yes i was oh i was goodness. shocked we had we had absolutely nothing left at the end of the day everything was gone that made me I, I was so happy that everybody i mean we went from spring hill to nashville to mount pleasant wherever 
from, you know, the homeless to the elderly. We hit, you know, um, you know, emergency rooms from Vanderbilt hospitals, Ev everybody who couldn't get out and have a, have a Thanksgiving meal. So that really warmed my heart that day. You know, it's funny. We had some guy contact the show, uh, said, I want to, I don't need food, but I want to help out. And he was supposed to send you uh, a couple hundred dollars. I hope that he did do that. Uh, and that's just a way of paying everything for it. And so anything we can have done sure, to help out you guys is great. I'm sure he did. We did get several donations and it was greatly appreciated. We have, a, we had a lot of volunteers, so it just, it just pulled together very, very nicely. All right, so I said every time I, I log on Facebook or social media, you're doing something special. And actually, I saw yesterday you had a fundraiser for a single mom down mm -hmm. in your area. Uh, why was this important, and why do you do this? She, when I hear somebody, and I've had several, I mean, she was one who was um, um, just in bad shape, and she needed my help like I've had before. Like I have them if they're sick or if they lose a spouse and they can't work, I'm going to try my best to try to get to help them. Um, even if it's just giving them a, a small donation from a fundraiser or if they come and eat and they need a plate of food, I'm going to give it to them no matter what. That's, that's how I am. That's how it should be. I don't like anybody to come in hungry, you know, and, you know, it was pretty busy last night. So she ended up doing quite well. I was, you know, very happy about it on such a short notice, you know, real quick, fundraiser because usually we we you know we book them ahead of time and you know try to advertise it as much as possible to get bigger crowds so it turned very well you know for you know a monday right after christmas so i was real happy about that as well oh I, i'm sure frank let me ask you this nine years down there what makes that area so special to you that the community works together everybody helps each other that's what i really love about spring hill you know, I'm not in it by myself. We get help and and volunteers and sponsors from, from everywhere. I mean, it's just, it's a really nice feeling to know that the community helps and works together in those types of events. Where did you grow up, Frank? I grew up in New York. New York. And, you know, and so you come down to the South and then boom, you get the Southern hospitality and yeah. next thing you know, you're never leaving. No, I love it in Spring Hill. I'm saying I love the people of the community. The businesses all work together. I, I couldn't fast for anything else. I mean, my wife, who does a lot of the um, advertising and social media, and, you know, I have the best employees in my in my restaurant, and I thank God every day for everybody. I couldn't ask for anything more. You're, you're fantastic. Your wife is fantastic. You're fantastic. Frank, thank you. I know it's early, and you work late nights. Thank you for doing this. And thank again, you so much. You got my number. Email me. And if you need any help with anything, promoting anything, let us know. We'll be there for you. I appreciate it. Have a great day. All right. Thank you, Frank. Grecian Family Inn Restaurant down in Spring Hill. Just giving back to the community. 1,600 meals on Thanksgiving. 1,600 help out our friends and neighbors. Uh, that's amazing. God bless you, Frank. Thank you for all you do for this community. Again, I tell people, you know, I, I've never lived in a lot of places, but it's hard to beat what we got here in Middle Tennessee. All right, we'll take another break. Come back. You know what time it is? Celebrity birthdays. You're watching Mornings on Main Street. I guess I started writing in uh, high school with my high school newspaper and continued to do that in college. But again, I'm, I've been writing almost 50 years. I guess I'm semi-retired, but I don't know what else I would do if I weren't working on a two, or, two or three stories every week. And that's what I love to do. I love, I love to talk to ordinary people who have extraordinary stories to tell. That is my passion. And I, I like to help them share their stories with you, the reader. While federal coverage is really important, often I really think that a lot of the decisions that are going to impact you most are made at the local level. Like, um, where's the stop sign's going to go? What's your speed limit going to be? How much are you going to pay in property taxes? We talked about that a lot. Um, and, you know, how much funding the schools are going to get, um, zoning decisions that are going to impact, you know, which developers can come in and change the neighborhoods and, and grow the city. And all those decisions are going to be made at the local level. I think I like that we have so many papers and so many communities, so it's, we get to be more localized. It's not like broad coverage of, this is all of Tennessee, like it's very much our own specific areas and we have reporters in each county slash city that we have papers in and I think that that's 
awesome. I mean, my favorite part is features and like human interest. I think those are the best because um, you get to highlight somebody who otherwise wouldn't be highlighted. See myself right. on there. How you doing today, buddy? Doing well, man. <laughs> doing well. Uh, fun show. Thank you, Donna Driver, Amy Billings, Miss Chief, and then Frank from uh, the restaurant Spring Hill, the Grecian Family Restaurant. Uh, great show. Great people today. So I'm very proud of the show. We're going to submit this for an Emmy Award, aren't we? Yeah, oh, absolutely. As we do every day. All right. Time for Celebrity Birthdays. You ready, pal? Let's do it. First up, uh, Michelle Nichols. She played uh, on Star Trek uh, Yahura. Lieutenant, you're, I'm, I'm butchering her character. <laughs> How old is Michelle Nichols today? 58. She's 89. Ah. Close. The original Star Trek. Yeah. The original. That's right. Uh, Denzel Washington, who, fun fact, met his wife on the movie set with Wilma Rudolph, the, the life of Wilma Rudolph. He met his wife in Clarksville, Tennessee. No kidding. Yep. Well, he is 64 today. 67. Mm. Seth Myers, who used to be funny. How old is he? 38. 48. God, you're terrible today. Yeah, they ate right. Uh, oh, singer John Legend. Not a fan, but nobody asked me. <laughs> he is probably 36. 43. Gosh. Actress Sienna Miller. Was she in Sounds the, so familiar. Uh, movie with uh, Cooper uh, over Chris Kyle, the American sniper, whatever it was? I'm not sure, but that's All a great right. movie. Um, I'm going to say that she is 51. 40. <laughs> Oprah's best friend, Gail King. How old is she? 61. 67. I'm bad. Okay. Oh, country singer, guitar player, Marty Rowe of Diamond Rio. Very good band. You have a song for me? Uh, Norma Jean Riley's going to dance with me. Everybody said, oh, good. That's what you can do. <laughs> Uh, let's do 78. 61. Wow. Man, you were all over the board today. I am not even close, really. Uh, American Idol runner-up David Archuleta. He did a Christmas special and with the Mormon Tabla Necro Choir recently. 38. 31. <clears throat> really thought I had that one. Yeah, you didn't. Uh, <laughs> Woodrow Wilson, 28th U.S. President. <laughs> um, no, he's... <laughs> He's been gone a while. Uh, you've gotten nowhere near today. What's going on with you? Are there not other celebs out there? Uh, actor Brendan Hines from Suits. Uh, let's do 41. 45. And hey, we're getting closer. Uh, actor Bo Garrett from The Good Doctor. 53. 39. <laughs> and finally, uh, American Idol runner-up David Archuleta. Oh, uh, 31. 31. <laughs> well done. Thank you. Lord, man. Remember, there. One day you're going to find out the deductive reasoning for birthdays. Okay. One day, and not today. Here's your hint. <laughs> okay. There you go. It's a visual hint. It's linear. <laughs> it's linear. It goes that way. <laughs> All right. Take care of yourself, buddy. See y'all. All right. That's the intern. Fun show, everybody. Thank you. The intern will send out the links later on. Mornings on Main Street. Go to our YouTube channel. It's all for you right there. Every segment we put up there. Again, thanks for watching, everyone. And we leave you with this. As we do every morning, be nice to people. Be kind. Let people in traffic wave open doors. Remember, this is really important. Nobody cares about your CrossFit workout unless you're doing it for charity. As always, remember, nobody ever went broke by giving. We'll see you tomorrow.